Hello, good day BSE to Matt. So this will be our lesson 3 sa ating BSE M26 which is uh, elementary statistics and probability. On our previous lesson, we talk about mean, median, and mode for ungrouped data. Now, we will discuss how to find the mean, median, and mode for group data. So, when the data is organized into a frequency distribution, it is said that the data has been grouped. So, kung uh, meron tayong frequency distribution and we have a table, that is uh, what we call the group data. But when the data consists of individual observations lang ng ating data, like given number, that is said to be ungrouped. So, again, in the previous lesson, you learned how to determine the mean, median, and mode of ungrouped data. So, in this lesson, you will learn to do this for group data. First, let's talk about the mean for group data. Ayan, that is what I am telling about earlier. Like when the actual data is unavailable or of an unmanageable volume. So more likely kapag marami talaga yung ating data, we are going to uh, determine the parameters or the statist statistics using a frequency distribution or using a table. Now, we will encounter this uh, set of symbol and its definition. So, first, we have yung x bar, which is what we call the sample mean. And then x, that would be the midpoint of a class. And then f, we have the frequency of a class. fx, that is the frequency times the class midpoint. And then summation of fx yung uh, summation, and then yung letter N natin, which is yung total number ng frequency or yung total number ng ating data. Again, we will talk about first mean for group data or it can be also called as arithmetic mean for group data. So to find the mean of group data, we will multiply each class mark by the corresponding class frequency. And then, we will add all the products and divide the sum of, by the total number of observations in the data. So, we will use this formula. So, mean is equal to summation of f of x over n. So, dun sa previous, sa mean ng ungroup, summation of x lang over n. Now we have the summation of the frequency of the class mark of the class interval and then divided by the total number of observations. So F natin, that is the frequency of the class interval, yung X, yun yung class mark of the class interval and then yung N, total number of observations in the data. Now, uh, this kind of um, definition is not very meaningful without an example. Let's have an example. So consider this frequency distribution uh, constructed for the data. So first, we have the class interval. To yung mga class interval natin, which is we have 54 to 58. 54 yung lower limit natin and then the upper limit we have in here is 93 okay and then we have 54 55 56 57 58 so all in all we have five five yung range natin with each class interval and then we have here the class frequency now we have here class mark how will we get the class mark? That is the question. How to get the class mark? It is easy. We have a formula. The formula to get the class mark is x is equal to x sub 1 plus x sub 2 over 2. Now, sino si x sub 1 and sino si x sub 2? So, in each class interval, we have here the first one that will be our x sub 1 and then this one is our x sub 2 or vice versa. Kasi addition naman siya. So that will be easy. Okay, so now let us 
compute the class mark. First, we have 54 plus 58, that is 112. And then we need to divide it by 2. We will get the answer. Wait, that's too big. We will get the answer, which is 56, right? And then next, 59 minus 6, I uh, minus 59 plus 63, that will give us. 122 divided by 2, that is 61. And then the third class interval we have is 69, 64 plus 68, that is 132 divided by 2, that is 66. And then 69 plus 73, we have... 142 divided by 2, that is 71. And then, 74 plus 78, we have 152, and that is divided by 2, we got 76. 79 plus 83, we have 162 divided by 2, 81. 84 plus 88, we have 172 divided by 2, that is 86. And then 89 plus 83, I uh, 89 plus 93, we will get 182 divided by 2, we have 91. Now, we already have our class mark. How will we get our uh, summation of summation of frequency multiplied to class mark okay so we need to multiply f and x to get fx of course so we have to multiply 4 to 56 and then 6 to 61 11 to 66 10 to 71 12 to 76, 16 to 81, and then 14 to 86, and 7 to 91. Again, we will multiply it one by one. So first, multiply muna natin sa ating unang uh, class interval, which is yung 54 to 58. So we have 4 times 56, that is equal to 224. We have 224. Let me just uh, clear this one. So, medyo mahirap mag-isa-isa. <laughs> and then next, 6 times 61, that is 366. And then 11, 11 times 66, we have 726. And then 10 times 71, that is 710. 76 times 12, we have 912. 16 times 81, we have 1,296, and then 14 times 86, we have 1,204, and then lastly, we have 7 times 91, that is 637. So now, we already got our f of x. This will be our fx. Say multiplication of frequency and then class mark. So that is fx. Now, we already got our fx. And the formula that we had before is yung summation of f of x. Okay, so how will we get the summation of f of x? We will add all of this. Okay, i-add natin lahat ng fx. So, 
that is 224 plus 366 plus 726 plus 710 plus 912 plus 1296 plus 1204 plus 637 we will got 6075 that will be our summation of fx the answer is 6075 now that will be our summation of fx now how will we get our letter n or the total number of observations in data we have our frequency right so that is the tally yan yung tally kada class interval now to get our n we need to add all of this 4 6 11 10 12 16 14 and 7 so our n that is equal to 80 so we have a large number a large number of data which is 80 now we already got our summation of fx and then our n now we can proceed to our mean so how we will get the mean that is 6075 divided by divided by our n which is 80 and we will get 6075 divided by 80 we will get 75 75.9375 that is our answer according to uh, my calculator of course but on my subject i only allow two decimal places so we need to reduce it into two decimal places which will give us 75.94 that would be our mean okay ito na yung mean natin 75.94 so do you have any questions kung may questions man uh paki write down and then at the end of the lesson when you already watch everything and then meron ka ng mga questions in your mind you can PM me right away, okay? So that is our mean now. Now, let's talk about the median. Yung median natin before, uh, arrange lang natin lahat ng number and then ano yung nasa middle or if even yung number ng data, get yung dalawang middle and then divide it by 2. That is very easy. Now, how to compute the median for group data? So first, you need to determine the interval. This is called the median class. The, the interval which is yung nasa middle. So that contains the middle score. So to do this, you must use the less than cumulative frequency. Now we have here uh, our formula L. That is the lower limit of the median's class plus n over 2, yung n natin, again, that is the number of the data, minus the cumulative frequency before the median's frequency. So that is Cf sub b over f, which is yung frequency, and then multiply to pi, which is yung, which is yung ating, class interval weight okay so uh, now let's have an example again now we have the class interval class frequency again and we will get the cumulative frequency how to get the cumulative frequency okay so let's just copy the first one laging kokopyahin yung una and then you need to add everything add 4 plus 6 that will give us 10 that will be the cumulative frequency next 10 plus 11 yun yung sagot which is 22 ay 21 sorry 
And then 21 plus 10, we have 31. And then 31 plus 12, we have 43. And then we have our 43 plus 16, that is 59. And then 59 plus 14, that is 73. And then 73 plus 7, that is 80. Kung mapapansin ninyo, uh, the total number of our data is the last number sa ating cumulative frequency. Kasi, inad lang naman natin lahat sila sa kanilang sarili. Okay, on the last part, you will get the total number of the data. Since we have 80 observations in all, we have two middle score, right? Kasi kung 80 yung, ating, 80 yung bilang ng observation natin or ng data natin, ano yung middle score natin? Yung 48 number or 48 data, pati yung 41st. Now, let us look at the table. Saan nakapaloob yung 48th and 41st? That will be our median class. 40, 48th and then 41st, we have our median class with, which is 74 to 78. Why? Because the cumulative frequency is 43. And then nasa kanya si 40 hanggang 41. Hindi naman pwede kay 31, right? Because that is lesser than or less than. And then kay 43, pasok na pasok si 48th and 41st observation. Now, let us get all the data within our formula. First, let's have our L. Ano daw yung L natin? That is the lower limit of the median class. Lower limit ng median class natin, so we have 74 to 78. Ang lower limit niya is 74, and then we need to subtract 0. 0.5. So the lower limit now is 73.5. Bawas ka lang ng, 7, ng 0. 0.5, that is our L. That, was, that will be our first data. Next, let us get our letter F or yung frequency natin, which is yung 12. That will be our F. F is equal to 12. And then, yung uh, CFB natin, yung cumulative frequency before the median class. Before. Ibig sabihin, bago yung median class, which is 31, right? That will be our CF. Lagay ko na lang CF yung B kasi sub siya. So that is equal to 31. And our N, N natin, that is fifth, uh, 80. Sorry, that is 80. And then lastly, yung letter I natin, which is yung class interval width. Di ba binilang natin kanina? 74, 75, 76, 77, 78. So, our letter I is 5. That is the class interval. Kung gaano kahaba yung range within the class interval. So, we all now have all the data we need sa ating pagkuha ng median class. So, hindi na ako gagamit ng uh, yung text part. Uh, gamit na lang ako ng pang-drawing. Sana maintindihan ninyo. Okay, again, this will be our median. I am doing my best to make it good, <laughs> yung sulat ko. Okay, so first, yung ating L, yung ating L which is 73.5 plus N natin, which is 80 over 2. Minus yung ating CFB, which is 31, over yung frequency natin, which is 12. And then, we will multiply it sa ating letter I, which is 5, right? Okay. So, 73.5 plus 40. Kasi 80 divided by 2, that is 40, minus 31 over 12 multiplied to 5. And then proceed 
5.5 plus 9 over 12 times 5. And then equal 73.5. Tapos multiply natin. 9 times 5, we have 45. Divided by 12, the answer is 3.75. Pwede nyo na na siyang itarecho. Now, let us add it. 73.5 plus 3.75. We will get 77. Point twenty five, and that is our mean seventy seven point twenty five. Okay, nakuha na natin si mean, nakuha na natin si median. Okay, last. Let me just move this one. Ayaw niya ma move si ke. Naliya kung kausap. Okay, so now let's have the mode. To determine the mode when dealing with group data, you need to determine the modal class. Okay, mid, median, meron tayong median class ngayon, meron naman tayong modal class. So, which is the class interval highest frequency? Yung modal class daw natin, ayun yung class interval na may pinakamataas na frequency. If there is more than one modal class, then several modes can be computed. So, one for each modal class using the formula discussed below. Kung merong pare-pares na frequency, let's say for example, si 50, 54 hanggang 58, 10 siya. Tapos si 69 hanggang 73, 10 din siya. Eh, kukunin natin ang isa't isa yun. Kukunin natin isa-isa yung mode nila using this formula. Now, let's, have, let's talk about the formula. So, we have mode is equal to LCB mo, which is the lower class boundary of the modal model class. Next, we have uh, plus C, which is yung class size or yung ay natin kanina, yung class interval width. And then, uh, multiply to FMO, which is yung frequency ng modal class, plus FB, yun yung frequency ng class before the model class. And then, F over 2 FMO minus FB minus FA. Yung FA naman ay yun yung class after the model class. Yung frequency ng class after the model class. Again, si C and si I is just the same. Class size, uh, class interval, it is just the same. Uh, don't worry about that. Pwede, ko, pwede niyong ilagay dito letter I kung nakakalito masyado. Yan, pwede ng letter I. Palta natin ng letter I para um, pareha tayo. Uniform. Now, again, let's, uh, let's have the class frequency. Kunin again natin si cumul cumulative frequency. Okay, again, the cumulative frequency, this is 4, 10, 21, 31, 43, 59. Actually, this is not uh, so important. Uh, hindi ko lang talaga siya nilagay para sa median. Kasi di ba, in-upload ko ito sa inyong LMS. Okay, ayan. Now, we will identify our model class. Sabi kanina, the model class will be the class interval with the highest frequency. Now, let's look at the table. Alin dito yung may pinakamataas na frequency? We have 79 to 83. That will be our model class. Now, let's identify all the data's we, all the data we need sa ating mode. First, we have the LCB mo. Okay? Sabi ng LCB mo, that is the lower class, class boundary ng ating model class. So, tingin tayo kay 79 minus point, point 0.5, that is 78.5, right? That will be our LCB mo. And then, F mo, bakit parang ang pangit, the frequency of the model class, that will be 16. 
And then yung FB natin, that is 12 FMO. And then yung FA natin, yun yung after, which is 14. Our I, again, that will be 5, right? Now, let's substitute all of this sa ating board. Hindi ko siya mag-delete lahat. Ayan. Gawin ko na lang ulit black yung board. Now, uh, LCBMO natin, 78. Lagay ko muna mode. Mode. That is equal to 78.5. Plus, yung I natin, that is 5. Multiply sa ating F. MO, which is 12, minus FB, which is, oh, sorry, sorry, ang ating FMO ay 16, and then 12 yung FB, over 2, multiply to FMO, which is 16, minus 12, minus 14, which is FA natin, right? Sorry talaga sa sulat ko. Again, 78.5 is it plus 5 multiplied to 4. Kasi 16 minus 12, that is 4. And then, we have here 2 times 16, that is 32. 32 minus 12, that is 20. Minus 14, we have 6. So, 4 over 6. And then, 78.5. Plus 20 over 6. Okay, so we can now divide 20 divided by 6. That is 3.33. So 78.5 plus 3.33. The answer is 81.83. And this is our mode. Okay, so nakuha na natin yung mean, median, and mode ng ating group data. Sana naintindihan ng lahat. So, uh, kung hindi nyo masyadong naintindihan, uh, try to do it on your own. And then, i-guide nyo lang itong video na ginawa ko na habang nagsasagot kayo. So that uh, you can understand it even better. Okay? So, if you have more questions about our lesson, you can message me sa ating group chat na lang. Kasi, let's say, for example, may tanong kang ganito, paano po nakuha si ganyan, and then ganun din yung tanong ng iyong classmate. So, masasagot ko siya right away. Okay, so, please do activity number two posted sa ating LMS. So, thank you very much for your uh, time and listening on my discussion, and I hope that everyone is doing well. Have a good day, and always keep safe. Thank you.